Hello friends this is Fox Nival Studios what if now we are here with new chapter what if Naruto was son of Lucifer. Before starting story please subscribe our channel. Story starts Hokage Tower Sakumo moved into the Hokage's office and took a seat in one of the armchairs before the old mon's desk. Shikaku followed after the man not sure what was waiting them from what the man next to him had to say. Dragon went and stood next to the aged leader. I got something here that you might not like. There were a few of Donzo's little roots left out in the world. Said Sakumo as he handed the scroll over to Seru Tobi as the old man took it and looked at the strange broken seal on it. He raised an eyebrow as he looked back at Sakumo. So, your network has out down Jiraiya's once more. Asked Seru Tobi as he sighed and unrolled the scroll the scroll and began reading it. One could only laugh at all the reactions run across his face as Dragon read over his shoulder. Once he was done, he handed it over to Shikaku to read and he had a look of horror on his lazy face. So, what you have here is true. Then Danzo was truly a traitor and has been working with my traitor of a student for a very long time. For it also talks about how he wanted to put sleepers in the clans with the clan head's children. But I will have Inoichi and Jiraiya look for any seals and triggers once more. Said Seru Tobi as he appeared to have aged another 30 years before them. Yeah. That would be a good idea. But I don't think he ever got around to doing that to the children for that night we attacked him. Said Sakumo with a wolfish grin on his face. I do believe you are right. But it is good to just double check to be safe. Said Seru Tobi as he just wanted to bash his head against his desk a million times over. With this new development we are going to up the training of all the new genin teams. Said Shikaku as his lazy gaze looked at the other men in the office. As well we will have to up the training of the shinobi and anbu of this village. We will not fall to that snake bastard and our allies that are siding with him. Said Dragon as he looked over at everyone. Well I know how to fix what's going on with Suna. For their lord has been sending their missions to us. For he isn't to please with Raza for what he did to his sister said Serutobi as he looked up at Dragon. If we redirect those mission back to their village that could help some and maybe stop them from siding with Orochimaru. But that isn't a 100% guarantee though, said Shikaku. He is right. Also that would tip our hand that we know something is up and the snake could move on us before we are ready, said Sakumo. What we need to do is act as if we are in the dark and maybe from time to time redirect a mission or two to them stating we would need their aid on it. He suggested as he looked at the other men as they nodded their heads. That would work. Also while we do that, we can sway them from siding with him and maybe even stepping back and aiding us. Said Seru Tobi sounding hopeful. Even though he was a veteran of two of the three shinobi wars, he still held on to hope. Only time will tell. Said Sakumo, team placement. It was the day that all the young genin hopeful had been waiting for. Naruto had gotten up early that morning for his normal morning training with his family. Trixie was standing in the kitchen looking outside as he watched Sakumo and Mei spar and Kurama just laid in a tree watching them. Naruto walked down the stairs and into the kitchen as he found his aunt. For the three angels had been sent off on missions for the village. Good morning Auntie Trixie, said Naruto as he smiled at her. Trixie turned around and smiled at the boy. Good morning Naru-chan, are you ready for today? She asked him. Yeah, I'm hoping I get a good team and a sensei that will teach me. For I kept hearing that Kakashi wanted me as his student and what I heard around from others he is always late for everything, said Naruto. Trixie nodded her head. Yeah he did. But Maze wouldn't hear of it and would have gutted him if he was your sensei and didn't teach you anything as well was late for all your training, she told him. Anyways Sasuke is stuck with him, so don't worry, she told him with a smirk. Naruto laughed. Better the teme than me. He grinned as he made his way outside. He would eat something after training. For how hard they push him during their morning training he would mostly get sick and that wasn't something he was in the mood of reliving at the moment. Shinobi Academy everyone made their way into their classroom for one final time. All the fangirls, boys watched their two, princes, walk by them. Naruto took his seat in the far back last row as Sasuke took his normal seat in the middle row next to the window. After a while everyone filed in and chatter could be heard. Ino was sitting on Naruto's desk looking down at her fellow blonde. So what team do you think you'll be on? She asked him. He looked up at her. I'm not sure. All I know for now it isn't going to be with Sasuke for he got a sucky sensei. Naruto snickered at that part. Ino, Shikamaru, and Choji arched an eyebrow at this as Hinata looked over at him. How do you know that? 
asked Ino wanted this little bit of gossip. My auntie Trixie told me, said Naruto with a grin. Just before Ino could laugh and anyone else could say anything Aruka walked into the classroom. All right people sit down and listen up. I have your team placements, said Aruka as Naruto spaced out. It isn't too bad brat you have Maze and Trixie as your Janin senseis and Shikamaru and Ino as your teammates, said Kurama as he was looking in the classroom window from his tree branch. Yeah, I know, but I am shocked they gave me two girl teammates, but they both did tie for top Kunoichi of the year followed by Sakura and I know she is going to be teamed with Sasuke and I think it was Kiba who had the lowest of the grades, making him the dead last of our year. His mother is going to kill him for that. Naruto laughed to himself. Team 7. Will be Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno, Kiba Inazuka with Akamaru. Your Janin sensei with be Kakashi Hataki, said Aruka. Yeah baby. The power of love. In your face Ino pig. Bellowed Sakura as she was jumping around. Both Kiba and Sasuke looked to be crying to have the loud banish on their team. The worthless useless fangirl. That will be enough Sakura. For I can have the Hokage change the team around said Aruka as a demon appeared behind him. This made Sakura shut up and sit down as she looked to be scared of the man. Team 8. Will be Choji Akamichi, Hanata Hayuga, and Shino Aburame. Your Janin sensei with be Kuranai Yuhi. Choji looked to be sad. For he thought he would be with his two best friends in the new generation of Ino Shika Cho. But he guess it wasn't meant to be this time around. I'll be okay Choji you have Hanata and Shino and they are really nice said Ino as she smiled at her large friend. Yeah you're right, said Choji with a smile. Final team will be team 10. For team 9 is still in rotation, said Aruka as he looked up at the last remain 3 that hadn't been called on. Team 10 will be Naruto Namakaze Uzumaki, Shikamaru Nara, Ino Yamanaka and your Janin senseis will be Maze and Trixie Namakaze, said Aruka with a smile. Why does the dope get two senseis, asked Sasuke. Aruka looked over at Sasuke. It's because Maze also works in T&I and, and from time to time will not have time to train her team. So her sister Trixie will step in to train them for her, he told the raven hair boy. Well your senseis will be here shortly so be ready to move on out, said Aruka as he jumped out of the way as his classroom door explode from a body being thrown though it. A silver hair man with three quarters of his face being covered laid on his desk as he looked up to see both Maze, Trixie, and Sakumo grinning down at the down Kakashi. Boy I hope that this lesson on being on time sticks with you. For I would be more than happy to be repeating it on a daily basis, said Sakumo as he stalked over to Kakashi as he stood over him. I know my younger brother taught you better than this. There isn't a reason to be late and I'm sick and tried of those bullshit lines you use. If I hear from your genin you're late, and you tell them you took the long way because of a black cat. I will find that cat and ram it up your ass. He told the now even more pale Kakashi. Yes sir. I will be on time I swear. Said Kakashi as he stood up and looked at the man before him with fear. Good to hear. Said Sakumo as he turned to leave. He is just like my father. Thought Kakashi as he stood up and looked at all the genin hopefuls with shock and fear on their faces. Team 7 you are with me. He said as he made his way for the door. Team 7 got up and followed after their sensei not knowing what to think. Naruto on the other hand was laughing. He really did what he said he was going to go do to him. Ino looked at him. You knew about this? She asked him. Well yeah. But we better go. For Maze is glaring at us. Said Naruto as he got up followed by his two teammates. Uchiha District Fugaku Uchiha with the clan elders and several others radical rebel members on their clan meet in their secret meeting spot under the clan shrine. Fugaku-sama. Are you sure it is wise to move against the village at this time? Asked one of the elders. Fugaku glared at the man. With Itachi forsaking the clan and becoming a missing ninja, what other option do we have? He questioned the same elder. Off in the shadows Ruby and the other hellhounds laid in wait for the time would come for them to kill these fools. For them trying to overthrow the village and take over wouldn't work for her master nor his master. She sat in her human form in the shadows holding a video camera recording everything these fools said. She was quite beautiful. With dark chocolate brown hair dark brown eyes and stood about 5 feet 4 with an hourglass figure. Holly growled to Ruby. It's almost time. We just need a little more and we can kill them. She told her fellow hellhound. 
Holly nodded her head and went back to watching the foolish humans. Fugaku looked at everyone in the room. The third has grown to soft with his old age. We need a leader that will build this village back up to its former glory when Madara first found it with the Senju clan. But sir that was during the wearing clan times. It has been over a hundred years and none of the clans or any one of the villages for that matter have been at war. Yes, we did come close with Danzo kidnapped all the heirs and tried blaming it on Kumo or another village, said a young Uchiha boy. He will be one of the first we kill. For those who question me will die, thought Fugaku. I know and my youngest was part of the group of children kidnapped and it was the Kami Dammit Namikaze that he was returned safety to us, he said as he looked around. But we need to bat the village in fire and brimstone to make it rise once against as the superpower in was in the past three wars, said Fugaku. The others nodded their heads in agreement to this madman they follow. Off in the shadows is a man with an orange spiral mask watching and laughing at his former clansmen. These fools. I'll slay them all soon. No one with this bloodline will live, he thought to himself as he vanished into a void. Ruby and Holly smelt and saw the man. Get to Lucifer and have him look for his former students in the afterlife. For that man smelt like Uchiha and something else. Something planet base. Said Ruby to Holly. As the other hellhound nodded her head to her pack leader. Ruby closed the camera and stepped back into the shadows. This was all that her master need to move against those fools. In their next little meeting they wouldn't be walking out alive. Hell Lucifer looked over files and growled out as he was growing tried of this. He wanted to be back on earth with his son, but his father told him his time would come, but he didn't know what he meant by that. Holly came running into his office. Master, she called out. Lucifer looked up from his paperwork as Kashina walked into his office with tea and some cakes she had made for him. What is it Holly? He asked the hellhound. Master I have a massage from Ruby. Said Holly as she sat before her master. She said that the orange masked man smells of Uchiha and planet and that to check and see if your two dead students are in the afterlife, she told him. This made Lucifer arch an eyebrow and strand up from his desk. Ren and Obito were his students in his life as Minato and they both had dead. Or so he had believed. Are you sure about that? Asked Kashina as she was now worried. Would one of his students go so far as betray us? She questioned. Holly looked over at her mistress. Yes, mistress I believe they would. For have you ever looked at the heart of an Uchiha? All those bastards want is power. For they are planning to overthrow the village. Ruby has the village evidence and is going to be showing it to Sakumo here shortly and if they take the village, they soon will go after the young prince for the power that is held within him and if they find out he is half angel, Holly trailed off for she saw her master getting upset. I'll meet with death and find out what is going on and see if he has my two former students, said Lucifer as he stood up and stormed out of his office. Kashina just watched her husband leave and turned to the hellhound next to her. This isn't going to end very well. Holly could only nod her head in agreement. Lucifer walked down a dark and shadowy hallway that lead to an old gothic wooden door. Knocking three times, the door swung open. It has been a long time Lucifer said a dark voice from the shadows of the dark room with only light from candlelight. Yes, has been a wild death. But I think you can drop the act. Said Lucifer as he looked around as the darkness faded away and the room brightened up into an old English study with death sitting behind a large oak desk. Tell me Lucifer this isn't a social call, said death. Lucifer sighed and looked at the tall skinny man with gray hair and gray pinsuit. I need to know if my two former students are here in the afterlife, he told death. Death arched his eyebrow as he placed his teacup back down and waved his hand over his desk as a book appeared before him. Let's see, he said with a hum. A frown married his face as he looked for the two names. It appears Obito Uchiha and Ren are not in the afterlife. He told Lucifer as he looked a little annoyed. It appears Madara killed my reaper that was sent to reap Obito. As for Ren she was saved and is in Kumo. Survived having the three tails still sealed in her. One by the name of Killer B saved her life and had her seal fixed. I am glad she is alive. But this is troublesome if Obito is alive. For that means he is the one that attacked my wife the night my son was born. Said Lucifer as he was growing enraged by this betrayal of his student. What could have made his fun-loving student fall so far? I know that look. All I can tell you. Love can do a lot to a lost soul. Said Death. Thank you for your time. Said Lucifer as he turned to leave. 
It appears Sakumo is going to be sending me many souls to be judged before Obito is able to carry out his plans, said Death. Lucifer turned and looked over his shoulder. That he is. He will be sending you most of all the adults of the Uchiha clan along with the elders and clan head, he told Death. Death nodded his head as a smile graced his thin weathered lips and picked up his slice of pizza, he had made from his from the man that used to own the pizza shop in Chicago so long ago. Lucifer walked back into his office where his wife awaited him as she looked over files. Well Death just told me that Obito and Ren are still alive. Ren is in Kumo with the three tails in her and Obito is masquerading as Madara, he told his wife. Kashina dropped the files in her arms and stood there for several moments before her brain just clicked. I'm going to murder that bastard, she screamed. All of hell shook from her roar of anger. Elsewhere Toby sat watching Payne talk with his little gang about gathering the tail beast. Just then a shiver ran down his spine. I feel like someone just pulled me out of my grave and set it ablaze and ripped my body to pieces, he thought to himself. Hidden Leaf Ruby walks into the train ground to find Naruto flying past her as Sakumo laughing at the boy using his wings to catch himself midair. All right brat. Ruby is here meaning I got orders, or she goes something good for me to see said Sakumo as he stood up and pulled the towel, he had in his pocket out to clean his face. Al all right. I need to clean up, said Naruto as he ran into the house away from his crazy uncle. Ruby smirked at Sakumo. Well lover I do have a both for you. Also I very pissed off Kashina wanting to go to war, she told her master, lover. Really now? asked Sakumo as he walked up to the ex-witch now hellhound. He pulled her into a kiss. Yes, Obito was behind the attack. He was also at the meeting that Moron Fugaku was having tonight. Said Ruby as she saw his eye flash amber for a spilt second. I see. Said Sakumo as he turned from her and sat down on a log that was next to the ground field. They're going to have their meeting tonight during the full moon. Master believes that this will be the best time for you to attack and kill them all. Said Ruby as she sat down next to him. This isn't the best time. The foolish angels are away but I will make do with Maze and Trixie and the pack of hellhounds," said Sakumo as he hand his hand though his raven locks. I wish you would allow your hair to go back to its lovely silver locks," said Ruby as she ran her fingers though his hair. He smirked at her. You know I am unable to do that. With my son still alive and how he didn't take my death to well and the death of Lucifer. Yeah him seeing me alive. It would drive him to the madhouse," he told her as he leaned back in catching her lips with his. You two do know we have a teenage running around the house and at any given time he has his friends over, right? Asked Trixie as she was giggling at the two before her. He old enough, said Sakumo as he pouted at the girl before him. Looks like boss man has a mission for us, asked Trixie as she walked over to the two as Maze came out of the house hearing mission. Yes, he has sent orders to kill all the elders and clan head of the Uchiha and all those who are going along with his foolish plan. Tonight is the night he wanted you all to attack for it's the night of the full moon and you might be able to get the fake Madara," said Ruby as Trixie and Maze both grinned. Karama was sitting in a tree listening to them. Sounds like a good plan. I'll babysit the kit and the angel should be back tonight. He told them as he jumped down at stood next to them. I guess that is the plan. Ruby get the pack ready and we will meet at 11.30 outside the Uchiha shrine, said Sakumo. Ruby nodded her head and vanished in flames. Well things are moving along a lot more quickly than we had hoped," said Trixie as she crossed her arms and stood before them in her adult form. They have tipped our hand. If they take control of the village, who's to say they wouldn't just use Naruto as a war or just treat him like a beast?" said Maze as she was glaring up to the heavens. That is why we are here. To tip the hands of fate back in our favor," said Sakumo as the others just nodded their heads. For tonight many things were going to come to light and some things that belong in the dark would find their way to the light. Uchiha District Sasuke sat in the kitchen listened to his mother talk about something as he was looking over a scroll she had given him to read. Sasuke I want you to grow stronger than your foolish father and your brother. You do not belong in their shadows. She told him making him look up from the scroll. Okay mom. But is bring this on tonight? Questioned Sasuke as he placed aside the clan law scroll. She sighed and looked over at her youngest. Your father might be doing something foolish that will damn this clan. If that happen and he fails I want you to be protected. If that happens, I want you to go to Naruto's family and have them take you in, she told her son. 
I'll do as you ordered but father is always up to something and nothing ever comes of his plans or scams. I don't think this one will happen like all the others, said Sasuke as he stood up and hugs his mother. Good night mother. Good night Sasuke. She told him as she kissed his forehead and went back to cleaning her kitchen. Waiting to see if her husband was going to carry out his new plan and if she would live through the night. It was already 11.59 p.m. We move tonight. Does everyone know who they will be killing? Asked Fugaku. All the men and several women nodded their heads to their clean leader. I am truly sorry about this Fugaku. But tonight the only ones on death door will be the ones here in this shrine. Came a dark male voice from the shadows of the shrine basement. Who's there? Show yourself. Demanded Fugaku. Outstepped Sakumo in his true from. His silver locks glowed in the moonlight. Death has sent me to stop this fool plan of yours. He told the man. How are you even here Sakumo? You're dead. Said Fugaku in a calm but fearful voice. Like I said. Death has ordered me here tonight to kill those of the Uchiha clan that plan to turn on their village. Said Sakumo as his eye began to glow and turn amber and before them was now a werewolf. His hellhound stepped out of the shadows on each side of him as Trixie and Maze followed suit. Tonight the full moon would be bathed in blood. Said Maze as she licked her blade and they attacked. Muffed screams could be heard from the shrine. But no one came to see what was happening for they had been placed under a peaceful sleep. Toby stepped into the shadows of the shrine to see if the plan was underway. But what he found made him sick. Before him was nothing but blood and guts and several body parts being eaten by hellhounds. It is a pleasure you join us tonight Obito, came a soft female voice. He turned to see a young girl seeing next to the wall watching the hounds eat. What happened here and why are you calling me Obito? I am Madara Uchiha. Drop the act Obito we know you didn't die that day during the third war. Came a deeper male voice from behind him. He turned to see a werewolf standing behind him throwing a hand to a hellhound. What the hell are you? He asked with fear in his voice. Just a ghost from the past that has come back to protect the future, said Sakumo. Well kid it's time to die, said Maze as she rushed Obito. But before she could kill him, we vanished into a black void. Bastard. Growled out Maze as she hit the wall with her blade. No matter we have time. He will be coming back, and we will get him them. Said Trixie as she stood up and turned back into her child form. Let's go before someone finds us here. Said Maze as they vanish into the shadows as the basement door opens. There stood Itachi Uchiha. Who was planning to kill his father and his whole clan if need be to save his little brother and the other children from the faith of hatred. But the sight before him shocked him. Quickly he rushed home to see if his mother was still alive. As he opened the back door, he found his mother in the kitchen putting the last of the dinner away. For she had grown tried of waiting for her good for nothing husband to come home. You're alive, said Itachi with shock in his voice. She looked up at him. Huh? What are you talking about dear? She asked her son. Father and the others are all dead. There is nothing left of them but a few body parts and blood and a few guts, said Itachi as he was growing paler and greener. So someone found out about their stupid plan and killed them. Good, she said as she turned away from her son and sat down. I know that isn't very kind of me, but I told your father that this wasn't going to end well for him and the others. Itachi looked at his mother with shock. You knew what father was planning all along and haven't told anyone? He asked her. She looked at him as if he was an annoying little child. I went to the Hokage and he told me he would talk to your father and the elders. But it appeared his talks went nowhere with that foolish man she told her son. Itachi nodded his head dumbly. Well get some rest for tomorrow you and I will have to clean the shrine. She told her son as she rose and went to the stairs. Good night dear, she told him with a smile. Good night mother, said Itachi. I wonder who I would have to thank for taking care of that asshole for me, she thought to herself. It was 6 a.m. and Naruto, Shikamaru, and Ino both stood in training ground 10 waiting for their new senseis. Maze and Trixie senseis will be here soon. They said they need to go get a lazy bump to do his job. Said Naruto as he grinned. They all knew they both women didn't like Kakashi for he was a slacker that lived in the pass and his poor team was going to pay for his weakness if he didn't get his head out of his ass. That's fine. It gives me a chance to get a little more sleep. Said Shikamaru as she laid back down next to a tree and fell quickly to sleep. Ino grinned at Naruto. You have a lazy girlfriend you know she told her fellow blonde. Naruto blushed. She isn't lazy. 
he said as he turned away from the gossip princess of Konoha. So you're telling me she really is your girlfriend? Questioned Ino with a Chester cat grin on her face. Shikamaru woke up and looked over at her friend with a glare as Naruto was blushing even more. Ai ai, he trailed off as Trixie and Mei showed up. That's enough from you Ino. We are in the works for a marriage contract right now. Said Mei's with an evil grin. That was enough for Naruto to pass out and Shikamaru to sit up and glare at Mei's now. That isn't funny Mei's sensei. Said Shikamaru. Mei's grinned as she looked at her students as Trixie woke Naruto up with a bowl of ramen. All right you three. There is normally a test I'm to give you. But I know how strong you are, and I know it would be pointless. So I say you pass, and we start with what I want to train you in as well as we are being these lame ass D rank chore missions. The quicker we get those done the sooner we move up to a C rank mission. She told her students as Trixie nodded her head. Most likely I will be the one that will be on these D rank mission with you for Maze will get bored and try to do something stupid. So during those times she will be at tea and I'm making trouble for Ibiki right next to Anko. Said Trixie as she smiled at her students. I am glad that we don't have to do the bell test that I read about in dad's notes that he did on his students and what his sensei did with him to see how we work as a team. Said Naruto as he gave a foxy grin. Both Shika and Ino looked over at their blonde hair teammate. You knew what test we might have to do. They asked him as one. Well yeah. It's normal for us to be tested on teamwork and the most basic of that test is the bell or tracking and we are not a tracking team like what I think team 8 is and what team 7 might be, said Naruto. Maze grinned. Well you are right to a point. Team 8 is going to be a tracking team with one heavy hitter on it. Team 7 is set up to be a frontline team with a tracker and maybe a medic whatever that fangirl gets her head out of her ass and takes being a kunoichi serious, she told her students. Then what are we going to be? Asked Ino not to sure if she wanted to know. We are going to be first response with interrogation and infiltration with a heavy hitter. Said Maze as she grinned at each of her little genin. So we will be getting a TNI training at genin level? Questioned Shikamaru as she sighed. Troublesome. Yes, that training will be in one week. During that week Anko will be joining us as well as Ibiki for he wanted to see if Ino will show any promise in taking over her father's job in the future. Said Maze as she smirked. Ino smirked. I would love to take over daddy's job but I'm having so much fun learning poisons that I don't know if I want to work in TNI. She told them. Well you know in TNI they allow you to test out all your poisons on the prisoners that are on death row, right? Questioned Trixie as she knew Ino would fall for the bait. Ino's eyes widen. You're joking right? She asked. Nope. Why do you think Anko loves it there so much? Said Mays with a devilish grin. Then I guess it wouldn't be too bad in looking into maybe taking over daddy's job in the future. Said Ino as she was now smirking at Maze. Okay let's see how we want to get started. We can take D ranks at the start of the day or begin with training. For I believe if we get the training done first, we could be doing D ranks after lunch and Maze can be off making Ibiki's life a little bit sunnier. Said Trixie as she is smiling at her longtime friend. I say we bring with morning training for the cooler mornings would make it easier on us and in the afternoon. We can do those chores that Maze doesn't want anything to do with. Said Naruto as he was smiling. Troublesome. We are going to be sore before we even get to our missions in the afternoon. Said Shikamaru as she is glaring at Naruto. Well I believe after we finish with mission we return to our compound and see what other skill you girls would like to pick up. We have already had Naruto learning sealing and kenjutsu and others weapons for I want him very well rounded. Said Maze as she studied Ino and Shikamaru as they both just stood there thinking. Like I have told you in the past in our group training from the academy. I need to learn some more jutsus and other fighting styles for my clan style leaves me defenseless when I use it. Said Ino as she stood there thinking more. That is something we can work on in the morning and in the evening. For we want you all to be well rounded. Said Trixie as she was smiling at the blonde hair girl. I need to build up my chakra reserves and stamina for my family jutsu does take a lot out of me when I try to hold someone down like Naruto who has a lot of chakra. Said Shikamaru as she was still thinking. Also I need more jutsu and fighting styles and weapons to rely on as well for once I am out of chakra, I'm pretty much screwed and I don't want to be seen as weak. Said Shikamaru as she looked a little annoyed at the idea of coming across as weak. Those are good things to point out and good things to know about yourselves and these are things we will be working on. Also I have a couple of fools seeing if they could try down a couple extra summoning scrolls while they are out on missions. 
for I want to make my team well-rounded and if I can have you three surpass the Senan the better, said Maze as a wicked grin crept across her face. She might not like the angels too much, but at times they could be useful to her. All right kids give us 10 laps around the training field for we will start off light today but by the end of the week I want you all to be able to run 25 laps and it will go up each week by 5 laps and after that we will work on chakra control by tree walking or water walking. Said May she was now throwing Kanai at the genin for not running. You know you don't have to throw Kanai at them. Said Trixie as she looks over at Mays. I know but it is more fun this way. Said Mays with a grin. So they wear off as they began their lives as shinobi even though they are at the bottom. They would soon move up for nothing was going to stop them and they would be damned if anyone gets in their way of becoming legends of their own rights. The angels had returned with four summoning scrolls they had found on their missions outside of the village. Naruto was sitting outside with Kurama working with the fox summons as a black and white fox kits ran around the lord of all the bijus and fox summons. Naruto looks up to see the three angels to walk into the courtyard. Hey everyone, he called out with a huge grin. Amenadiel smiled at his nephew as Azrael waved at him and Uriel just nodded his head to the boy. How has your training been coming along Naruto? Asked Amenadiel as he walked up to his nephew. It has been going well. It has sucked that the old man has been sending you three out of the village a lot. Sakumo has been doing his best to train me in my angelic powers along with Kurama here. Said Naruto as he looked over at Kurama who was still playing with the kits. What does a werewolf and a fox know about angelic powers? Scuffed Uriel as he was growing annoyed with playing with these humans. He'd rather be back in Silver City. You would be surprised what one learns though out the years. Said Kurama as he looks up at Uriel as he didn't care very much for this angel. He would rather rip him to pieces send him back to Silver City in a pretty little box. Uriel glares at him as he didn't care much for the biju. He blamed the fox for his troublesome brother's death. Also the creature was unnatural to his world. It wasn't demon and it wasn't angelic. It was a creature created of pure energy and it could change their father. That is enough out of you Uriel, came Maze's voice from behind the three. They turned to see a pissed off raven hair woman. She wasn't in the mood for a pissing contest with this angel and the biju. If you do not like it here, why don't you return back to Silver City and send someone else that could aid us better, she told him. I would if I was allowed. Growled out Uriel as he turned away and left the group. Amenadiel looks to Naruto. Please forgive him. The mission went south, and he almost lost his wings against an Iwa ninja, he told his nephew. Naruto just smiles. It's alright. He is always like this when you guys get back from a mission. I've told the old man to make him a desk ninja for Uncle Uriel isn't a field ninja anymore. He is too old to be playing with the young pups, he told the older man before him. Amenadiel smiled at the boy. Very well spoken. There are times we angels do need to take time away from fieldwork and just take it easy and train to rebuild out strength and I believe it is his time once more, he said. Azrael looked up to the heavens. Father it might be time to recall my brother. I don't things will end well for him here. She silently prayed to the heavens. Silver City God watched over his children and his grandson. He heard his daughter's prayer. He could agree with her. Uriel has been pulling himself away from everyone and hadn't been wanting to spend as much time with Naruto anymore. Even when missions would come up, he didn't want to take part. He did all what he needed to do just to make it by and made the other two carry all the weight of all the missions they had been taking. Uriel should return back to Silver City, he doesn't care at all to train Naruto. I think Amenadiel and Azrael are doing well on their own with training the boy. I do not need Lucifer coming for his brother. For if anything happens to his son and Uriel hadn't done nothing to save the boy, it will not end well for him. So tonight, send him a message and have him return. Ordered God to a random angel as they rushed away to follow their orders and make a scroll for the Hokage of Uriel passing away in his sleep and the family taking care of the body already. Hell Lucifer had been watching what has been going on with his son and saw his brother just not wanting to be around. This angered him. Konoha Maze looks at her ex-lover Amenadiel. What summons have you found? She asked him as they all walked into the house as the kits had returned home to their mother. We have found the dire wolves, tigers, panthers, and oddly enough a very old scroll for hellhounds. Said Azrael as she looked at the others. Naruto should sign the wolves and hellhounds contracts, said Kurama. This had all eyes on him as they looked at him. Why? Asked Naruto as he was wondering. I already have the fox summons contract, he tells Kurama. 
Karama looks at him. Because the villagers will freak out if you ever have to summon me on a boss fight inside or outside of the village walls. He tells the boy. Not many people really like me for what happened last time. He tell him. Naruto nodded his head. He understood where Kurama was coming from. He would just use the fox summons mostly do Rakan and other things and will train with the other two summon contracts that he was told to sign as Kurama was the boss summons he didn't need to ask if it was alright. Amenadil pulls out the two scrolls and gives them to his nephew. I hope they sever you well nephew. Naruto nodded his head and unrolled both scrolls and bit his thumb and signed both summons. He ran thought the hand signs and shouted out for both summons. Dire wolves. Hell hounds. He yelled as there was two large puffs of smoke before him. There before him was the three-headed hellhound Cerberus and Chaos of the Dire Wolf Pack. Both the boss summons of each summons. Who summons me? Asked one of the three heads of Cerberus as his crimson eyes looks around as Naruto stands before him strong and tall. Who has the gall to summon me? Asked Chaos as his amber eyes fall on the blondy hair before him and Cerberus. I do. Said Naruto as he looks at them both. Kurama takes his nine tails form as he stands behind Naruto. Just in case he needs to fight for the boy's life against these two. A human child has summoned us? Scuffed Chaos as he was now laughing. Do not laugh. I am the son of Lucifer Morningstar and Kashina Uzumaki. I am Naruto Namakaze Uzumaki Morningstar. Said Naruto as his wings came out of his back as he was claiming his birthright. Cerberus looked at he boy with shock written on all three of his heads. So Mooring Star did have a son after all. He questioned as he looks at Kurama that stood behind the boy. So what is he your master now? No he isn't my master. I am sealed within him. For the humans fear what they do not understand Cerberus. So do not mock me. For it could easily be you or one of your children in my place. Said Kurama as his gaze turns to chaos. That goes to you as well old friend. Both boss summons looked at Kurama with understand. For they had gone through their own time periods where people hunted and feared them. I see you also hold the Kitsune summons. So why do you sign with us both? Questioned Chaos as he wanted to know. I was the one to tell him to sign both those summoning scrolls. For he wouldn't be able to use my summons within these village walls. So having powerful summons as you both will make up for when he isn't able to call for me. Said Kurama as he knew this always pissed the two off. It to the two of them to take down his sister the two tail cat and they stood to chance of taking him down. Chaos glared at Kurama for his little shot at him and Cerberus. What makes you think we will allow this child here to be our summoner? Questioned Chaos. Naruto smirked at this. For Cerberus already works closely with my father and my uncle Sakumo Hataki. He told the two bosses as Cerberus stiffened at this little bit of information. So he is your uncle? I thought he was a lazy drunk that was go for nothing but killing and screwing several of my female hellhounds. Growled out Cerberus as Sakumo appeared from the shadows. You don't have to be rude about it and I am only with the former witch Ruby. The others I will not lay with for I respect Ruby too much. Said Sakumo as he was grinning at the large three-headed hellhounds before him. More like an afraid before she cut the balls off her last lover for laying with another. Said Cerberus as he saw Sakumo shift a little. That is enough. We are here about the kit. Not about WHO is fucking WHO. Growled out Kurama as the house shook from his power alone. He was showing them who was the boss and king of all demons and boss of all Kitsune summons. I do not have the time for you three fools to waste. You will allow the kit here to be your summons. I will know if you refuse to allow him to summon you and I will pay you a little visit. Even if that means bring the kit to your summoning realm. I will stomp you into the ground like I have for centuries and prove my power once more over the two of you and anyone else who has the gall to face me on the field of battle. He growled out as the flames of hell licked at his open mouth and his paws. He wasn't playing with the two of them and he will train Naruto to have his kind of power. But he will make sure the boy still holds his heart of gold for he was the purest soul he had ever felt in his life. Something that was too good for this world. But who was he to make that choose? Both Chaos and Cerberus took a step back from the Lord of all demon and bowed their heads in fear and respect. Yes, my lord as you request. They said as one. This isn't right. I should have them coming to aid me out of fear and respect for you Uncle Kurama. Said Naruto as he was feeling sad and uneasy about this all. Kurama looks to the boy knowing his pure heart was hurting him watching these two being forced into his service. Then what do you want to do about it Kit? He questioned. 
Naruto looked at Kurama and then back at the other two. A small smile graced his lips as he walked up to the two boss summons. He held out his hand to the two of them. Hi I'm Naruto. We got off on the wrong foot and I just want to be your friend. I don't want you fear me because of Kurama or come to my aid at his request or demand. I want you to help me because we are friends. He told the two before him. This shocked the two before him. You mortal child want us as your friends? Questioned Cerberus as his three heads looked at the boy as he was up to some kind of trick. They couldn't find anything. They couldn't fell in negative energy or that he was lying to them. He was being honest to them. For the first time in a long time. A mortal had told them the truth. Why would you want to befriend us? Are you not scared of us? Asked Chaos as he watched the boy closely. No I'm not. Said Naruto as he shook his head at the dire wolf boss. I have been around Kurama and Maze all my life as well as the crazy snake lady Anko. I'm not scared of you. Once you had giant snakes chasing you it takes a lot to scare you. He told them. Chaos smirked. He has heard about how Anko of the snake summons is very playful with her summons and loves having them scare and play with people all the time. I see. Was all he said as he turned to look at Cerberus. Cerberus met his gaze and slowly nodded his heads. We will give you this chance to prove you are different from the humans we have trusted in the past. But if you ever betray this trust, not even Kurama can save you from us, he told the boy. That sounds fair, said Naruto as he nodded in agreement. The kit will surprise you, was all the Kurama said as he watched the two friends vanish in a poof of smoke. He just hoped that the power he let loose didn't scare the shit out of the villagers. If it did on well, they could suck it. In the morning you will give your mate the panther summons and the other blondie the tiger summons. I had wished they had found something that would have been poisonous, but baggers can't be choosers, he said as Naruto nodded his head. He had been a long night for the boy. He was ready to turn in. His nerves were on edge from face two of the scariest summons he had ever seen in his life. With that said he had passed out before everyone. Kurama just chuckled as he picked up his kit and took him to his room to get some rest. He needed it after tonight. That night Michael had left heaven with only one mission in mind. It was rare for the archangel to even leave heaven these days as he didn't want anything to do with anything going on around him. He had lost his passion and light for fighting. Leaving everything to his siblings to handle but oddly enough he had gone to his father. Flashback. Father I wish to be the one to go and fetch Uriel. Said Michael as he looked up at his father. God looked down at his depressed son. If that is what you wish to do. Then so be it my son. Said God as he smiled at him. Michael nodded his head and took the scrolls form the angel that was to head to earth to pick up Uriel. End of flashback Michael stood before the front door of the door as Maze could feel a strong angelic power coming from the front door. Who the hell is here now? She grumbled as the others looked over at her a little puzzled. What's wrong Auntie Maze? Asked Naruto as he was confused. She looks over at him. Why don't you go answer the door and you will find out? She told him as Naruto stood up and walked over to the front door. As he opened the door there before him was a man with golden blonde hair and violet eyes. Michael looked a little shocked when he saw his nephew for the very first time. If he didn't know any better, he could be looking a younger version of himself. But Lucifer was his twin brother and it wouldn't be shocking for Naruto to look like him. Hey who are you? Asked Naruto as he just looked at the man before him. Trixie getting a little worried she walks over to the front door to see who Naruto is talking to. Michael clears his throat. I am Archangel Michael and I'll here to bring back Uriel on father's request said the now named Michael as Trixie looked surprised at the man at the door. All right, come in Uncle Michael, said Naruto as he stepped aside. Hearing the name the boy said all the angels and demons in the house had gathered in the living room as Uriel was glaring at the angel that walked into the house. What are you doing here Michael? asked Uriel as he didn't have time for silly games. Michael narrowed his eyes at his brother's blatant disrespect for him. I am here to drag your lazy butt back to heaven before Lucifer breaks out of hell and tries killing you once more. He told his younger brother as he wasn't in the mood for his BS. Uriel narrowed his eyes at him. On whose orders? He questioned as he wanted to know who ordered this. Father. He has been watching you and how you been negating your duties here. It is best you return and someone or no one replace you here in the house. Father has already made up a scroll for the others to give to the Hokage. Stating you had passed away in your sleep from a heart attack and they had already taken care of your body. Said Michael as he had a little joy watching the anger in his younger brother's eyes. 
Uriel smirked. I am glad I'm leaving this hellhole. I am not even allowed to carry out my mission with that damn Hokage always sending us out of the village for bullshit missions. He growled out as he didn't want to play ninja anymore and just wanted to go back to Silver City and sleep and be a lazy bastard. Wow I didn't know you felt this way. Said Naruto as he looked sad and began to walk out of the living room as he had been made to feel like he was nothing but a burden to his uncle. All in the room looked at Uriel with narrow eyes as they glared at the man for how he left his nephew feeling. He just rolled his eyes at this. It is best he toughens up and learns now not everyone will do everything for him, he growled out. But before Kurama could move across the living room and kill the man before him. Michael punched Uriel breaking his nose and began to stomp him into the ground leaving the angel a broken bloody mess on the ground. You will learn to bite your tongue. This will be the very last time in a long time you will ever see Naruto and how you leave here tonight. He will know that you had never loved or cared for him but saw him a waste of your time and a bartend that was forced upon you. Growled out Michael as Uriel vanished in a silver light. He had been dragged back to Silver City to now answer to his father for his actions and behavior. For if Lucifer had seen this, there was nothing their father could do to stop the man from coming and killing Uriel. Always a watchful and caring father Lucifer had seen it all along with Kashina. They both will be heading to Silver City to deal with Uriel. Michael sighed. He should have never come here. I knew he would be doing this sooner or later. He did last longer than anyone would have though he would have. He said as he shook his head in disappointment. You should have allowed me to kill him growled out Kurama as he could feel how sad and heartbroken his kit was about this all. Michael looked over at the redhead. No for I would have killed you, he said with a cold tone. Kurama smirked. You can't kill me. For you would have killed Lucifer's son and Lucifer would have broken out of hell and appeared here and killed you before you could have done anything, he told the archangel before him. Michael frowned as it was true Lucifer had changed since he had become a father and with his crimson hair lover by his side. The ex-archangel was much more powerful than he was at this time. H.N. was all he said as Kurama smirked. I see where the Uchihas get that from, said Mays with a dark smirk. Michael glared at the woman as he had met the very few lucky Uchihas that made it to heaven, and he would had rather sent them to hell for their egos annoyed him to no end. Do not compare me to those monkeys, he growled out. Someone is sounding like the old morning star, said Azrael as she looked away quickly and hid behind Mays. Anyways Uriel is now gone. Why are you still here Michael? Asked Maze as she wanted to know. Amenadiel nodded his head to this question. Yes, bother. It is rare for you to even Silver City in this day and age. Why are you still lingering here on earth with us? He wanted to know. Michael looked at them. For you are not training the boy in his angelic power and it is not sitting well with me, he told them. This shocked them all as Michael was one that hasn't wanted nothing to do with Lucifer since his fall from grace. So what are you going to stay here for the time being and take over his training? Asked Azrael as she wanted to know what was going through her brother's mind. Yes, for now I will stay, but I will not become a shinobi of this village for I will not answer to anyone but our father, said Michael as they just nodded their heads at him. Kurama just sighed. He was stuck with the stick in the mud for the time being and he didn't want to deal with him whatsoever. He would give anything to just have Lucifer return and take over and deal with all these fools. The demons had shown more heart to his kit than the fool Uriel and the other two angels have done their best. So he doesn't hold nothing against them as he knew they'd been taking missions so the Hokage would leave him alone. For they feared to tell the old monkey that the redhead they all had been talking to be the Kiyubi. They would have a heart attack. But they would have to tell him soon for Naruto was now going to go on missions and the old man was going to state with him once more. Damn it all to hell. For now just leave the kid alone. He needs to rest. He has to meet his mate and his other teammate to teach them how to use their summons. After he returns from training and missions you may begin your training with him. Said Kurama as he was being the protective brother, father to his kit. Very well. Said Michael as he looked at Amenadiel. Samita so Ural's old room. He ordered as the other quickly rose and showed him to his new room. Next day Naruto quickly ran to the training ground 10. He wanted to be there early for they would be working with Trixie today as Maze was needed in tea and I for Anko and Ibiki had a tough cookie to break and they needed her skills for this one. Sitting under a tree was Ino and Shikamaru as they both just chat. Well more Ino chatting as Shikamaru was trying to take a nap as she was bored and tried. Hey, said Naruto as he appeared before the two of them. They both looked up at him. 
Hey Naruto, Naru-kun, said both Ino and Shikamaru. He grinned at both girls. I go a gift for the two of you. He told them as he unsealed both summoning scrolls from his left forearm. One scroll had a black strap on it and with a picture of a large black cat of some kind as the other had an orange and black strap with a what looked like a tiger on it. Ino perked up at this. You got us something? She asked him as she was excited at getting a gift of some kind. Shika she just raised an eyebrow to this. What did you get us? She asked him as she was wondering what he got them. He grinned at them. Well, my auntie Azrael and uncle Amenadiel found some summoning scrolls and I wanted you two to have personal summons, he told them. They looked at him wide-eyed. Are you sure about that? Asked Eno as she was shocked at this. Yeah. Summons are very rare and hard to find and why are you so willing to give them away? Asked Shika as she couldn't believe what she was hearing. I want you to be stronger. As it is, I already have three summoning contracts and my family didn't want them and if I just stored them in my family library, they are just going to get dusty. So why not give them to my friend and my girlfriend? Said Naruto as he was grinning again. You have three summons? Asked Shika as she was now wondering what contracts he held. Yeah. One of them I can't use in the village for the villagers will have a heart attack. Well I think they would have a heart attack from all three of my summons. If you really do think about it. Mused Naruto as he was now thinking as he held the two scrolls for the girls in his hands. Okay, said Ino as she was even wondering the same thing as her best friend. But that is besides the fact. You will meet two of my summons as we train with your summons. Said Naruto as he looked down at each scroll. Shika I want you to have the panther summons as they are silent stalkers and hunt from the shadows. He said as he looked over at Ino. Ino I want you to have the tiger summons as they are strong and beautiful like you. He said with a cheesy grin on his face as he watched her blush and Shika glare at him. Each girl took a scroll and looked at it and back at him waiting for him to explain what to do next. Alright open the scroll and write your name in blood and then put your handprint in blood. But make sure you use your hand that will be mainly for summoning. When you're done with that I'll show you the hand signs and then once you have them down you will push as much chakra as you can into summing them and then talk to whoever comes and let them know you are their new summoner. But sometimes come summons will have you do a test. So be ready for anything. Said Naruto as both girls nodded their heads to him. After doing as he told them he had shown them the hand signs and after 30 minutes they had pushed as much chakra they could into summoning and with two large puffs of smoke appeared the boss summons. Who summons me? Question a large panther with a scare of its left eye. Who has found my scroll? Question a large white tiger. We do. Said Shikamaru and Ino as one. Both boss summons look at the girls before them. Who summons Shiba of the panthers? Asked the now named Shiba. I do Shikamaru Nara. Said Shikamaru as she stood tall and looked the summons in the eyes as she was going to back down. A little fawn believes she is strong enough to call upon one like myself laughed Shiba. Narrowing her eyes Shikamaru glares at the large cat before her. I may be a fawn right now. But soon I will be a strong doe that will be the head of my clan. She said in a strong voice. She had lost all laziness that normally laced her voice as she walked up to the panther boss and stared her down. Shiba smirked at the girl. Very good cub. I will allow you to summon us. But be warned, if you cross us or betray us. There will be hell to pay and your mate there and his summons will not be able to save you. Kurama will be damned. She said as she hissed Kurama's name at Naruto as she glared at him. Hey, I never said I was going to call him for anything. Whined Naruto as he glared back at the large panther before him. She smirks at him. I know cub, but that bastard lurks in the shadows and knowing him he will do all in his power to have his way. She told him as Kurama jumped down and glared at her. The girls look at Naruto's uncle a little puzzled as he glares at the panther boss. Damn you Shiba. The kid's mate and friend were not to know of me just yet. He growled out as his eyes flashed crimson and an aura of a nine tail fox appeared around him. It appears you never change Kurama. Said the tiger boss as he narrows his yellow eyes at the man. Kurama looks at him and smirks. Still sore about losing to me. Well I should be asking are you still sore about losing to my baby brother the one tail? He told the tiger. The tiger narrowed his eyes even more. Shukaku just got luck, he growled out. Ino and Shika just watched this man piss off two summons as larger as a mountain without any fear whatsoever. The tiger turns away from Kurama and looks at Ino and looks the girl over. So little flower. Do you believe you are strong enough to summon us tigers? 
he asked her. Eno glared at him bawling her hands into fist. Don't call me that. My name is Eno Yamanaka. Yes I do believe I am strong enough to be your summoner. She told him as she stood strong against the tiger that could just eat her in just one bite. A child of the mind-walking clan. Interesting. Not many of your clan are able to handle summons for they are too weak. Said the tiger as he grinned as he was pushing any button on her he could. My clan might not be the strongest. But we make it up in heart and strong will to never give up and leave our friends and commands behind. I will do all I can to stand on equal grounds as my teammates and be the future clan head of my clan one day. Said Eno with fire in her eyes. The tiger smirked. He had light the fire he was hoping to see in her. Very well. I Yure will allow you to summon my clan. Said the now named Yure. Eno bowed to him. Which shocked the large tiger summons. Thank you. I will do all I am able to. To make you and my clan proud of me. She told him. Both summons looked at Kumara. You old bastard. We will have a rematch once again someday. Said Yurei as he vanished in a cloud of smoke. You still owe me dinner Kurama. Said Shiba as she winked at him and vanished as well. Kurama just grumbled to himself as he was getting ready to leave the kids. Wait. What did those two mean about you Kurama sensei? Asked Shika as she looked at her part time sensei. He looked over at her as he let out a sigh. Come over tonight and I will tell you. But you will not be able to repeat what I tell you. For it is classified information and it has a death sentence attached to it. He told both girls as they paled looking at him with shock written across their face. With that he vanished in a swirl of flames. Naruto smiled at the both of them. I can't wait until we begin training with our summons. For Uncle Kurama said if the summons allows it, we can become sages. Like how Jiraiya of the Senin is the Toad Sage. He said with excitement in his voice. Both girls just nodded their heads as they didn't even think that far ahead as their friend, boyfriend has already for them. Trixie had come walking up on her team as she saw Kurama leave the group. Hey guys. She called out as they all turned around to look at her. Good morning Trixie sensei. Said Ino and Shika as one as Naruto just grinned at his aunt and waved at her. She smiled back at them. So what did I miss for Kurama to leave in a ball of flames like that? She asked them. Naruto smiled sheepishly. Let's just say the girl's summons just outed him and he wants to meet with the girls tonight to tell him our little secret. He said as he looked a little nervous about that. Trixie just nodded her head. Well it's going to be very interesting. Was all she said as she turned and looked at the others as they looked a little confused at her. For now don't worry about it. You both will find out soon enough. She told them as she just waved them off. The girls just nodded their heads to this as they didn't know what to think about this. Michael stood off in the shadows up in a tree just watching his nephew talk with the two girls and watch the summons as well. Well he has chosen a strong female. But will she be able to handle the fact he is the son of the devil? He thought to himself as Kurama appeared before him. You know it isn't right be to a stalker. Said Kurama with a smirk on his face. Michael narrows his violet eyes at him. I'm watching the boy. I want to know how much work I have before me. He growled out as he didn't like speaking with the biju. You don't have too much work before you. For I have done my best to teach him about his angelic powers when the others are away and when they return. They work with him beside that lazy bastard. Growled out Kurama. Michael scuffed at this. Like a demon like yourself knows anything. I know more than you think little archangel. Said Kurama with a smirk as he jumped from the branch he was standing on as Michael had swung his flaming holy sword at him. Keep it up little archangel. Lucifer will be here before you know it. For nothing will happen to his son or myself. For our lives are linked. Even though your father had changed the ceiling a little. Said Kurama as he vanished once more. He had to meet the others at the Hokage Tower to have a nice long talk with the old man. Michael growled to himself. Damn beast. His eyes moved back to Naruto as the boy was jumping away from one of Trixie's attacks as his wings appear behind his back. Beautiful black and white feathers mixed into his wings. Michael looked on in shock. The boy was pure, but he also gotten his father's black wings from when he had fallen. Naruto smirked as he stayed in the air longer than normal before his wings faded once more and he went falling back to the earth below him. Ouch! He cried as he was rubbing his back and his head as he fell hitting his head on a stone and his back on a tree. I hate it that I can't keep them out too long. He whined to Trixie. It's fine Naru-chan. We will get you better trained now that your uncle Michael is here. I wish I would have listened better during my training with my wings. 
said Trixie as she looked away sheepishly. A pure soul wishing to live in hell with all the demons and fallen. Many in Silver City had looked at her for wanting that path in her life. Even her mother was shocked for her daughter wanting to stay close to Lucifer and Mays. That is an amazing bloodline Naruto, said Ino as she loved looking at his wings. Naruto blushes. Thanks Ino, he said sheepishly as he rubs his hand behind his head as he looks away. Shikamaru just studies the two as his family always said weird things and always seemed to be different from the others in the village or even different from a normal human in many ways and with Naruto having this strange bloodline limit it always made her wonder what all her boyfriend was hiding from everyone. No matter what she wouldn't judge him or treat him any different. She just wanted to know what to expect from him. Hokage Tower Kurama appeared next to Sakumo and Amenadil. Are you two ready to get this over with? He asked the two next to him. It's best to do this now. If not, it will be troublesome in the future, said Sakumo as he was channeling his inner Nara at the moment. With a nod the three men walked into the Hokage Tower with the missions they each had. Kurama figured he would handle his last as it would surely give the old monkey a heart attack. They slowly made their way up the long stairway to the top floor where the Hokage's office was. Each man lost in their own thoughts about what was about to happen. Slowly but surely, they had made it to the old man's office and knocked on the door. Come in. Was heard on the other side of the door. They opened the door and walked in as they saw the old man doing his paperwork and was alone as his anbu had left the office. As they feared two of the three men in the trio before their hokage. Ah Sakumo, Kurama, and Amenadil what do I owe the pleasure of your visit this fine morning? Asked Seru Tobi as he smiled at each of them and watched his anbu run like scared little girls. This sad. They are the elite and they run from two of the three before me. He thought to himself as he let out a mental sigh to this little detail. Amenadil stepped forth with a scroll in his hand. I have grave news. But Uriel had passed away last night of a heart attack and we had always handled his body and cremated it. He told the old man before him giving him the scroll. Everything is in the scroll, he told him. Serutobi nodded his head. I see. I am truly sorry for the lost in your family. He did appear not to be feeling well last night when you three returned from your mission, he told Amenadil. Amenadil just nodded his head to this, as he didn't want to say any more. Sakumo stepped forth. I handled the little issue you were having with the Uchiha clan. All those who wanted to rise against the village have been turned to Hellhound Chow. He said with his eyes flashing amber at the thought of all those screams. Serutobi paled at this. I didn't know you knew anything about what was happening with them he said with a hint of fear in his voice. Sakumo smirked. I have a better spy network than Jiraiya's and I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty to protect those I care for. He said as the old man knew he was talking about Naruto and he knew that they would do anything for the boy. Kurama smirked. What I am about to tell you will shock you. So you best not have a heart attack on me you old monkey, he told the elderly leader. Serutobi arched an eyebrow to this as he wanted to know what the hell was happening. What are you talking about Kurama-kun? He asked. Kurama took a seat before the elderly old man. There is a reason I have not taken missions from the village and I'm always close to Naruto. Haven't you ever wondered why I was always close to the boy? He asked. Well yes I have wondered that many times and I have asked the others and they all told me to ask you for you're the only one with the answers I need. Said Serutobi as he was finally getting one answer to the many mysteries that surround the Namakaze, Uzumaki clans. Well Naruto is my Jinchuriki. I was sealed within Naruto that night and I was told not to tell you or anyone for Minato and Kashina wanted the child to have a normal life and for no one to know the secret that the boy had the nine tails sealed within him. But my seal is special as it allows me out of him for, I was ordered by Kashina and Minato to raise the boy and make sure he had a good life, said Kurama as he watched the old man before him. Serutobi's eyes wide in shock and fear for the man before him was the beast that destroyed this village so many years ago. But how? Was all he could ask. A higher power get in the way and stop the Shinigami for taking Minato's soul and my soul was changed to allow me out to raise the boy. For the higher power said if the boy was outed as the jailer of the Nine Tails the villagers would do all in their power to kill him and hurt him any chance they could get. This was the only things we could do at the time. For the child is very special and we couldn't allow him to be raised hated and abused. Said Kurama as he knew the old man wanted to say that wouldn't happen. That wouldn't have happened. The villagers would have honored any wishes of Minato. He told Kurama. Kurama just scuffed. 
Tell me how the other villages treat my siblings sealed and the other human? He asked the old man. Seru Tobi opened his mouth to speak but quickly closed it as he knew that what Kurama was saying was true. Naruto would have been treated badly and would have never been cared for or even have friends as he has now. He wouldn't have had a normal childhood and the elders would have demanded that the boy would have been trained as a weapon as how they wanted to do that to Kashina once they learned of her being the holder of the Nine Tails. He let out a defeated sigh. You are right, said Seru Tobi as he looked away with shame written across his face. But who all knows about you being sealed in the boy? He asked as he wanted to know. Kurama just smirked. Just his family and soon his mate and other teammate. He told the old man before him. Seru Tobi nodded his head. Just make sure the girls know that it is important for them to keep this secret. For we do not need it coming out as his life would change and there would be a massive uprising with the villagers demanding him to be punished or worst. He told Kurama and the other two. You think I don't know that you old fool. I know better than any of you monkeys how you monkeys turn on each other over the littlest of things and this would be the stone that would destroy this village for I would do everything in my power to protect my kit and I will kill anyone and everyone who tries to hurt him or kill him," said Kurama as Sakumo nodded his head as Amenadiel also agreed with the two other men. With a heavy sigh as it appeared Seru Tobi aged another fifty years just now. Anything else you want to tell me? He asked them. Kurama and Sakumo just smirked. Not now. Maybe later said Sakumo as he stood up and walked back to the office door. With a nodded they left the office and left an old man wondering what the hell was going on in his village that he didn't know about it. Uchiha district Itachi along with his mother cleaned up the shrine as they didn't want anyone to see what had happened there. The cover story they came up with was it was a mass suicide and they would handle it as they didn't want to scar anyone from the site that was left behind those who lost their mind last night. Naruto and Team 10 It was the end of the day and all of Team 10 walked back to Naruto's house so they could get some answers from Kurama about the summons freaking out about him and to have dinner with the boy as Amenadiel was making dinner tonight and it was going to grill for them. So please promise you will not freak out and also you cannot tell anyone about this. If Kurama chooses to later on. We can tell your parents but for now. It is something that must stay with us said Naruto as he was very nervous as he was scared to lose his best friends and girlfriend over this huge little secret about himself. Don't worry Naruto. We trust you and I don't think there is anything you can tell us that will shock us anymore, said Ino as she smiled at him. Shikamaru took his hand into hers and smiled at him. It will be fine you troublesome blonde, she told him with a smile on her face. I just hope so, said Naruto as he opened the gate leading the girls into his clan lands as they walked up the house. There standing there waiting for him to return was Michael as he was glaring at the girls right next to him. Hurry up. We have training to do and I will not be wasting my time here. I do want to return to Silver City soon, said Michael as he was straight to business. Okay Uncle Michael, said Naruto as he wasn't too happy, he wouldn't be with the girls when Kurama drops the bomb. Kurama appeared next to Michael. Still an asshole, he said as he looks at the girls. Let's go to the backyard and watch them and we can talk there. He told the two girls before him. They both nodded their heads as they followed after Naruto as his bossy uncle. Michael stood across from Naruto. All right boy focus and make your wings appear, he ordered. Naruto nodded his head and did as he was told. Kurama looked at the girls as they sat under a large old oak tree. Well I know you two are wonder why I know those two boss summons, he asked them. Well yeah. They talk like you are one of them and have fought them on even ground said Ino as she was trying to figure this out. Shikamaru just studied the red head before her. Naruto said something about a summons he had that the village would have a heart attack about if they ever seen it in the village walls, she said. Yes, said Kurama as he watched the little Nara try to figure it out. The only summons that I could think about that would have the villagers panicking would be a kitsune summons. Is that the summons you are tied to? asked Shikamaru. Kurama grinned as he looked at the raven hair girl before him. That I am. For I am the boss summons for them. For I am the Kiyubi no Yoki as you humans call me. But I am also called the Kiyubi no Kitsune as I am the nine-tailed biju that was forced to attack the village on the night that my kit was born. He told the two before him. Ino's and Shikamaru's eyes widen as they are sitting across a man that claims to be the strongest of all the tailed bijus. But how? Asked Ino as Shika was thinking. There is a special seal on my kit that allows me out of him to take care of him. 
for his parents made me promise nothing bad will happen to him and the others have been covering my ass for so long to keep me off of missions as the damn elders wanted to send me out of the village to get their hands on my kit and do Kami knows what to him. But they didn't know about me being sealed within him. Your Hokage just found out today as well. For I will be vanishing from the village once your team takes missions outside the village walls and the others will not be able to cover for me then, said Kurama. So that night you attack. Someone had forced you. Asked Shikamaru as she was trying to study him. Yes. I was made into a puppet by some damn Uchiha that is Rouge. At the time. The only Rouge Uchiha from this village is Madara and he should be long dead. But things don't always go the way we think. But this Uchiha did have some of that man's chakra in him. But it wasn't the true Madara but a puppet for the bastard as well. Said Kurama as the girls seemed to understand where he was coming from. Alright. It isn't your fault nor is it Naruto's. You both were just forced into things at the time out of your power. As he was a newborn and you under the control of an Uchiha. Said Shikamaru as she wrapped her mind around it all. I'm not going to treat Naruto any different for I do see you two as your own two beings, she said. Kurama grinned and nodded his head. I always liked you and you're good for my kit. He said as he looked at Ino. Naruto is Naruto and you are Kurama our pain in the ass part time sensei that loves making our lives a living hell in training. Said Ino as she just smirked as this wasn't the worst thing she had ever heard. The worst was when the rumor began about Sasuke being gay. Which she is still wondering about and about him really, really liking Naruto. Well I'm glad you two took it better than the kid thought you were going to take it. For he feared that you would throw him away and fear him for having me within him. Said Kurama as he was proud of his kid's friends. Troublesome. Why would we do that? We grow up with him and you always around and you have protected us from a few bastards that tried attacking us at the park before any of the damn Uchiha police showed their lazy asses up. Said Shikamaru as she wouldn't turn her back on him now. Kurama nodded his head and they watch as Michael throw Naruto around like a rag doll around the training ground. The Archangel wasn't holding his punches and was putting the boy though his own version of Hell Boot Camp. The end the story end here I hope you like this video so don't forget to subscribe our channel for more content like this.